The Shakers were really already well established in New England when they found out about the great revivals here in Kentucky. The Shakers came to Kentucky and during those revivals um, started letting people know what they were all about and people initially were, were off put by it. Um, their theology, their, their way of living was so different than what most people uh, were used to that um, they didn't like it. And it's uh, always been odd to me that they were able to get so many converts to it because it was uh, all about communal living, number one, and um, not everybody wanted to live that way. Uh, the celibacy aspect of it was probably the most controversial thing of all. Amazingly, entire families joined the Shakers during that period and were willing to separate in order to have a more godly purpose for their life. Initially, that was why people were willing to convert because they were very willing to dedicate their entire life to God. It was a sacrificial thing. Later on, as the Shakers progressed, their living environment, their creature comforts were so much greater than other people. It brought even more and more people to places like uh, South Union and Pleasant Hill. Uh, people came just because it was a great place to, to live. The Shakers believed in the onset of equality of the sexes. In fact, the founder of Shakerism was Ann Lee, a woman, and um, she established leadership in male and female, an eldress and an elder who would oversee the most important, important part of their life, which was the spiritual aspect, the spiritual growth. But then each one of the dwelling houses, the communal dwelling houses, had an elder and an eldress too to take care of the temporal matters, the things that people needed. The dwelling houses were symmetrical, divided down the middle, one side for men and one side for women. Uh, there are two staircases which kept the, the sexes apart. Um, there is no real division, there's no wall between the sexes, only an imaginary line down the middle of those buildings. So there was a trust aspect, an accountability aspect. The Shakers knew early on that they were going to have to make money to make this enterprise work. Uh, you can't keep having people come in day after day and feeding them three hot meals a day without giving them something to do and producing income as well. So they established industries uh, just from the very beginning here at South Union. Uh, they started with a mill here that, where people could bring in their cloth and have it sized and finished um, and they did that as a service for the community and got money in return. Uh, they made carpets and rugs uh, in the community. They made silk cloth, uh, imported silkworms, and um, sold bolts of cloth and thread. Uh, so they were thinking of everything that they could possibly do to, to make money and to keep people busy here too in, in industry. The Shakers believed that their work was worship and if you can make that uh, worship and that work more efficient and you can get more done and you can seek perfection a little bit better, you are willing to uh, adopt any kind of technology that's available, and the Shakers did. They thought that anything they did on a daily basis, if they could do it more perfectly, then you were praising God or worshiping more perfectly. So. Uh, the, in the kitchens, they got the newest of stoves and ovens, and when one wore out, they would find a, another. Uh, they believed that technology also simplified their lives, and they were all about simplicity. In this village, um, they had running water in the dwelling houses and in many of the workshops as early as the 1830s. They had uh, indoor plumbing here after the turn of the 20th century and the electric lights. Uh, they had a telephone system here in the village the very year that um, Alexander Graham Bell invented it. So, you know, technology was a really good thing for the Shakers and they were all about that. The 1850s were a great time at South Union because economically they were doing well, the population was up. From a spiritual standpoint, wonderful things are happening here within the community uh, as well. But the Civil War uh, was one of the things that changed everything at South Union. Uh, because they were located on a main highway through Kentucky, troop movement took place day after day after day. And um, the troops camped here, they demanded food, they uh, took up fences for campfires. The Shakers were not able to peddle their wares for about four and a half years. Uh, it really uh, made an impact at, at South Union. The railroad was built in 1860, right prior to the war. And what they saw 
as a great boon, possibility of a boon to their economy did take place after the war, but it also took away the young people. So what they saw as a, as a great thing initially was probably one of the things that helped destroy the community. Uh, a community where you're not producing your own children uh, and you're depending on converts. If all the young people leave, your population grows older and they're not being replaced, and that's what happened here. By the turn of the 20th century, there were only about 50 people left at South Union. They were still trying to carry on some of their industries. Many of them had closed. The community still had in its ownership about 4,000 acres of land and they could not take care of it. Most of the work was being done here by hired laborers at that time. Uh, it just was not working the way it should. The Central Ministry in New York came down for a visit in 1921 and deemed that South Union was no longer a profitable uh, or an effective force for Shakerism anymore and uh, they said that it should be closed. The village had a huge auction in um, September of 1922. Uh, it was the last of two or three auctions that had taken place that year, but the final auction saw the dissolution of the village. It saw the dispersion of all the furniture that was left, the farm equipment, the livestock, and the place was cut up into to many, many farms. Um, uh, one central track that held most of the historic buildings was part of the village proper was bought by uh, one gentleman. After he bought the property, he soon began to tear down buildings. Uh, he tore the church down, the meeting house, and built a vacation home near where the foundation was of the original building and tore down huge dwelling houses and um, the trustee's office that had been the, the seat of all business here for almost a century at that time. And then um, took the cemetery stones up and ground them and built barns over part of the cemetery and grazed cattle over it. And uh, so I don't really know why there was so much destruction here other than the fact that um, those older purposes were long gone at that point and he had a new purpose for the place. And, uh, definitely was not someone interested in historic preservation or the history of the Shakers at all. It's interesting that artifacts, objects continue to come back here too. Uh, each year we, we accession things that maybe somebody's great-grandmother bought at the auction in 1922 or now their great-great-grandparents um, as time goes on. But um, things continue to surface and it's all part of a big puzzle that helps us know more about what the Shakers were like, what their furniture looked like, uh, what they wore. Um, it's just a fascinating, it's a fascinating um, part of my job that I really, really enjoy.